So I talk to you guys a lot about training the posterior chain, and I'm always telling you guys to row. But it's not just rowing that's training the posterior chain. We've also got to train our glutes. And that's not just so that we can look good in a pair of jeans. Training your glutes is gonna help bulletproof your lower back, preventing injuries there. It's gonna help you build strength and power. It's gonna make you jump higher, run faster, and you're gonna squat and deadlift more too. So we wanna get that in. The best way to train your glutes, or one of the best ways to train your glutes, is a move called the hip thrust. The unique thing about the hip thrust is that it's more of an isolation move than most of our other leg exercises. When we're doing squats, lunges, deadlifts, we're hammering every single part of our legs. When we're doing a hip thrust, we're really concentrating on our glutes, really isolating that part of our body, and really getting to focus on driving glute contraction, which sometimes we forget to do in this world where we sit so much. The key to getting the most out of the hip thrust is executing it correctly making sure that our glutes are driving the motion and that we're not having our lower back drive the motion and we're not totally missing the point of that. We're gonna show you how to execute that perfectly right now. So we've got Brett here and he's gonna help us demo this hip thrust, but before we get into that, let's take a look at the bar we're gonna use for this first. You see a lot of people using standard Olympic bars at the gym to do hip thrusts and that creates this long lever. We want you to load up and focus on your glutes. I don't want you to have to worry about managing that bar and making sure it's not tipping all over the place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this. This is a trick I got from Brett Contreras who actually created the hip thrust and we're gonna use a smaller bar. In this case, we're gonna use an easy curl bar, but you can just use a smaller barbell if you have that at your gym. You're still gonna be able to put plenty of weight on it, but now you're not gonna to have to over-focus on just managing those long levers because they're smaller, so you can focus on really squeezing your glutes. That's what we wanna do, and now we're gonna to start to position Brett for this hip thrust. So what he's gonna do, he's gonna put his shoulder blades against that bench. He's gonna choose a point in front of him to look at. Think about looking at something about 45 degrees up. He's never gonna take his eyes off of that point as he's doing this hip thrust. You don't want your lower back involved in this motion. You want this to come from all glutes. Now we just need to figure out our leg position. And the way we're gonna do that, Brett's gonna go into the top of a hip thrust. And what he's doing, he's looking to make these shins perpendicular to the ground, make sure his heels are driving into the ground. If he had set up a little farther, let's give them a bad setup. If he was a little bit off, now he's in the top of a hip thrust. He can find that position. He can move those legs back. Now he knows where he needs to be for the hip thrust. So this is his position. Now he's basically set up to do the hip thrust. Now all he has to do is roll the bar up, get that bar set up on his hips, and then he's gonna be ready to do the motion. That's what we're getting to next. So now Brett is positioned to do the hip thrust. He's got that bar in position two. It's a little bit above his pelvis. You wanna find a nice comfortable position with that bar and he's gonna grasp it with an overhand grip. Make sure he's nice and tight with that so that it's not racking all over the place. From here, the hip thrust is pretty simple. Again, he's not gonna lose that 45 degree angle. He's gonna keep focusing on that perspective and all he's gonna do is drive up and squeeze his glutes as hard as he can. You really want to open your knees as you're doing the hip thrust. Then we're starting to get some hip abduction action in there, which is also another way we can really stimulate our glutes. Driving up, really focusing on keeping those knees open. Now let's give them another rep, Brett, and let's show them what happens when you don't do that. Suddenly you're caved in. This is not a knee safe position. And again, it's also not giving you everything you want to get out of the hip thrust. You're not getting as much glute activation. So you really want to focus on keeping those knees open. You don't want to worry too much about keeping a fully straight line from knee through torso. Don't worry about that. All you want to do when you get up here is really squeeze your glutes and as high as your hips get when you squeeze your glutes, that is all you need to maximize when you're doing the hip thrust. And that's how we want to see you do it every time. So there you guys have it, the hip thrust. And one of the best parts of this move is how versatile it is. You're gonna recover quickly from it because it is more of an isolation move. And the great thing about that means we can use it in a variety of ways. You could do this say three, four times a week, making sure you're taking a day of rest in between each session. Do say three sets of eight to 12 reps at a moderate weight so that you're continually working those glutes. You can use it at home if you want do it completely unloaded with just body weight, just to again, reinforce that glute contraction. Say do four sets of 20 reps just while you're watching TV. Or we can pack this into our standard leg workout. Make it say your second or third exercise, and maybe you're going heavy in this situation and you're doing three sets of six to eight reps. Either way, you want the hip thrust in your workout, trust me. So get it in there and let's build those legs.